Just your first impression. What do you see in your mind's eye? What is this memory? The more you talk, the more I'll be able to help you. How do you imagine? Blinding white light. Blinding white light. Mm. It's reflecting off of a desert floor. Mm -hmm. It's a... broken up, like... broken into pieces, cracks in the floor. Mm -hmm. And the observer that is looking at this light and the desert floor, do you have a body there? Connect with the observer of this scene. What do you sense? Not really. Mm -hmm. Like a... More of a force. Mm -hmm. Tell me about this force. Where are you observing all of this from? What is this force? It's almost like fire, mm -hmm. like fire. Mm -hmm. Like fire. This white light feels like fire? Uh, that's the, uh, the environment, or mm -hmm. I'm also part of the environment. Mm -hmm. This force, is this what you are? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how do you affect the environment? Observing. Mm -hmm. You observe the environment? Mm -hmm. What is it that you're observing at this time, besides this cracked up floor? It's the end of something. Something ended. Something ended. It has a, a sadness mm -hmm. about it. Does the environment have a sadness, or do you? The environment, it's from the environment. Mm -hmm. um, and I... What do you have to do with this environment? Did you cause this end? I'm somehow not entirely separate from it, but mm -hmm. I... Let's see how you affected this environment. I'm going to count from three back to one. When I get to number one, I'm going to touch your forehead, your third eye. And let's find out what this environment looked like before it was set. So take a deep breath in now. Three. Going back in time before the sadness. Two, winding back, and one, be there now. Where are you? Uh, kind of marshy, mm -hmm. uh, grassy, pale colored grass. Mm -hmm. What color is the grass? It's like... It's like what's that color? Sea foam green. Mm -hmm. and do you see water? Or is it just grass? There's some water. It's not standing. It's
it's almost farmland like mm. farmland mm -hmm. like farmland S simple dwellings mm -hmm. what do these dwellings look like thatched roofs thatched roofs mm -hmm. animals I don't feel like I live here though mm -hmm. are you just an observer are you a visitor yes mm -hmm. do you see any people there in the distance, mm -hmm. just going about their business. Mm -hmm. What do these people look like? Oh, dark-skinned. Mm -hmm. Simple dress. Simple. Mm -hmm. There are cattle. And I'd like for you now to focus on how this place feels before there was sadness. How does it feel now? Simple, just clean. Clean. Mm -hmm. This wasn't their fault either. <sighs> there was destruction. There was some massive destruction. All right. So I'd like for you to almost like as if you're frame, freeze framing to see what destruction this was. So I'd like for you to just begin to go forward in time when destruction begins. And let's find out where it came from. What happened? Climate, climate issues. Climate issues. Mm -hmm. <sighs> what caused the climate issues? Other people. Mm -hmm. Let's focus on what happened. I'd like for you to be there in the moment and see it happening. Who are these other people? far away, they live a very different way. Mm -hmm. How far are they? It's like almost around the planet. Mm -hmm. A quarter of the way. Mm -hmm. And how do they affect these simple people? There is technology, some kind of technologies. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Focusing even, even deeper. Let's look a look at this technology and see what it does. Some kind of genetic something. How does this technology affect the land to make it so dry from being washed? There was a there was some kind of accident. Mm -hmm. Something got out of hand. All right. I, uh, I feel sick, like there was some kind of... There may have been illnesses, mm -hmm. something that came of it too sick and like the planet uh, was sick with with um, everyone got sick. Mm -hmm. well, let's focus in on what this technology is that got out of hand. It's genetic engineering or something. Mm -hmm. Was it affecting the people or the plants? What were they? It spreads like it spread. It, they didn't have control of it. Mm -hmm. They thought they could control it. And it unbalanced everything. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah. So let's find out if the entire planet has been affected. Just zoom out and see. I feel like there weren't as many people. Mm -hmm. uh, what planet is this? Does it have a name? Wanna, I, I wants to say here. Mm -hmm. okay. So I'd like for you to zoom out 
and let's go towards where it is that you're coming from, where you're observing this from. Just zoom out of this earth and find out what force it is that you are, that are able to see what's happening on this planet. Allow yourself now, I'm going to count from five back to one, and you'll go to your origin of where you're viewing this from. Five. Zooming out. Four, following your energy field. Three, two, and one. Be there now. Where are you? Like the collective. Mm -hmm. This is a project. This is a project. And it failed. Mm -hmm. What was your responsibility with this project? It's biological, it's multi-dimensional biological engineering. Mm -hmm. Were you part of that experiment? I wasn't in it. Mm -hmm. Tell me more. What was your role? Balances, balances, uh -huh. balances, balances. Tell me about these balances. Is about nature? Yes. Mm -hmm. Nature and consciousness. Nature and consciousness. And the place they meet. Mm -hmm. Tell me more about this. Why is it so important? This is the skin of source. Mm -hmm. Three dimensional. It's like the place, the sensory place. Mm -hmm. Are we talking about Earth? Everywhere. Everywhere. But yes, mm -hmm. this one. Was. And we work in three dimensions. Mm -hmm. Tell me about these dimensions that you work in. So I could understand. Consciousness, imbuing consciousness into three dimensions. There is planning. The, the biological form evolves with stewardship, mm -hmm. with interventions to be capable of hosting consciousness, source consciousness. So is that what this collective does? Yes. Mm -hmm. So what does this collective have to do with the planet Earth? This is the the latest and greatest. Mm -hmm. How is that? Every, every new planet of free will builds on the one before it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You are creating your physics mm -hmm. and those physics inform the physics of the next universe. This place was seeded and we are working to we are working at the place where source consciousness experiences 
in 3D mm. and as they evolve they become more multi-dimensional and connect with higher bandwidth higher fidelity So before you saw marshy planet and then a devastation. Has this happened on Earth before? Yes, mm -hmm. in different ways. In different ways. So what about now? Where is the planet now? This is celebration. This is celebration. Mm -hmm. What has happened with the Earth at this time? Oh, we squeaked it through. Mm. How did that happen? Mm. A lot of planning mm -hmm. and a lot of <sighs> human, human. Can you tell me about these humans? They evolved. Hmm. They They responded. Mm -hmm. they, they have a unusual ability to change their minds. Hmm. This is surprising. Why is that surprising? It's not. It's not every creature hood that can do this. Hmm. There is something about this creature that allows for hairpin turns hmm. and quick changes in the probabilities. Mm -hmm. So that's not available on other planets? Not to this extent. Mm -hmm. Not to this extent. When did this evolution happen with humans on Earth? The evolution has been from the beginning, the biological aspects, mm -hmm. the beginning of Gaia, mm -hmm. the co-creation of Gaia, it's co-creation with humans, and then an intervention to change the DNA, make it multi- Dimensional. When did this happen? This, this change, <sighs> this intervention. Was that recent? Tens of thousands of years ago, mm -hmm. and then failure and failure and failure, and and then this collective decided to get its hands dirtier this round and came in to in body so are you saying that this collective actually took bodies on earth to intervene everyone wants in mm. <laughs> this collective had vested interests because of the work that they had put in since the beginning. Mm -hmm. Are there others that are also intervening at this time? Uh, 
Uh, intervening is a strong word for embodying mm -hmm. because of the, the veil. Mm -hmm. They're cut off. Uh, they know they're going to be cut off, but they don't understand what that really means. Mm -hmm. uh, so there is intent. What comes through in the embodied being will differ mm -hmm. based on the biological piece and the Akashic piece. Mm -hmm. And it is a clockwork, a massive clockwork of Can you explain that, what you mean by clockwork? Is it some sort of synchronization? <sighs> Akashic, different Akashic potentials catalyze with different biologic potentials and some are more predictable than others. Mm -hmm. This one is not predictable. Mm -hmm. This one was high risk, high reward. Mm -hmm. What were the risks that this entity named Shelley took to embody? She would leave. She would leave. She would, would leave. Mm -hmm. So why did she choose this mission here on Earth? <laughs> the whole collective is a little cocky. Mm. Because they believed it would have... They believed that humanity would make it. Mm -hmm. They believed in the work everyone was working on. They believed in the they came in to show it could be done. Mm -hmm. So they did it. They chose the rough neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. Because not everyone is not everyone was betting for. There are there are energies that didn't think it would happen. So when these from the collective chose to embody on planet Earth, you're saying that they chose the rough beginnings, the rough families to start in? The rough, rough places? Yes, specifically mm -hmm. to show not only could it be done, but it could be done from... dark places. Mm. And how many from the collective are here now on Earth? It's no... It's not like that. It's, it's not. It's pieces. Mm. I, it's like a spectrum. Mm -hmm. there, are, there are a lot of bodies. Mm -hmm. But there are not a number of energies. Okay. And many of them are in these situations. Many of them chose these places to start. Mm -hmm. Now, when these that chose to serve here on Earth at this time, such as Shelley, did she have some of this knowledge with her when she came? Her kosh was fairly clear. Mm -hmm. She had already cleared a lot of karma. Mm -hmm. The trick was to keep... <laughs> She 
she came to a formulation of her experience when she was a, a child that she was a probe mm -hmm. and this was helpful was she a probe no not so much mm -hmm. what was she why did she know so much as a little girl She'd done work, mm -hmm. and the biology that was chosen was conducive to that work as well. Mm -hmm. And she was fostered, even in that difficult place, there was support from her mother of intuitive. Uh, but she was kept from she was kept busy with projects mm -hmm. because we didn't want her to have to unlearn old energy esoterics. Mm -hmm. Is this why she chose a place where her basics didn't follow the regular norm of all of the other humans? Was she being separated? Separated? Mm hmm separated from perhaps mainstream education or more of the mainstream life? Not like that, something else. Hmm. Can you tell me what that was? The feeling that she came away with from her childhood was um, being able to save, being able to save. Help. She, she had the capacity, she built capacity. And this kept her in projects. Mm -hmm. This was important. Mm -hmm. It was important to keep her in what she thought were mundane projects, social work, intellectual work, so that she, she always felt the pull of source very strongly. Mm -hmm. For, for years she felt guilty for not following the call, but she wasn't meant to yet. Hmm. If she had followed it, she would have studied, <laughs> and she wouldn't, she would have built a box for herself. Hmm. She would have enclosed herself? She would have built a structure mm -hmm. that would hinder her now. Mm -hmm. So everything she's gone through is really on target. <sighs> Those targets constantly changed. Mm. She, she almost left multiple times. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Why is she still here? <laughs> What's ahead for her? She is a teacher. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a little different, though. Mm -hmm. She's teaching the grid. Mm -hmm. We have her physically where she is, too. Because there's close connection to Gaia there, mm -hmm. the physical structure of the place. She taps into Gaia and it is the template, it's the template that is learning from her. She thinks of, 
sharing what she knows, and there will be some who can make use of it now, but not until she's older. Mm -hmm. How is she teaching the grid? Does she do it on purpose? She didn't know she was on it. <laughs> mm -hmm. She is on purpose. She's mm -hmm. a bear trap when it comes to purpose. She wants purpose. She's learning what physics is. Mm -hmm. And she thinks she has to keep it to herself in some ways because The, the information is so large, but she's not keeping it to herself. She's pumping it straight in to the template that will create the next generations coming in. They will come in with her understandings. She is informing. So as she learns more, She's helping with those that are coming in next. Yes. Mm -hmm. Isn't that what the collective does? That's what the collective does. Mm -hmm. But it is not the... It's not the 3D payoff. Mm -hmm. of the... She's not going to see it. Is that it? She will see it in her... Her Gaia. She will see it in her... world, and there will be people who will pick it up in... that are in, are in her cohort now. Mm -hmm. More will come later more will come from the template, the new templates. Mm -hmm. So she asks a question about long life. Mm -hmm. she's, she feels that she's weighed down still. She's cleared so much, but she feels weighed down still from just having come in in the old energy. And there is some truth to this, but That connection to the old energy is necessary for the teaching to be connected to those in the old energy in a direct way, to build the bridge, mm -hmm. to show, to show. She thought she would end up in a monastery because she dropped everything. That's not her purpose. Mm -hmm. She has to be in the mundane world. Now, while she's in this mundane world, how can she understand what she is supposed to know? Where does, oh, she, where does she access this? This you, yeah, you are, you are talking about so many of the right things. Mm -hmm. The ego issue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> humanity right now, the light workers, as you identify, have these, uh, I'm going to say it and it's going to sound harsh, mm -hmm. have these ego issues and they are not what you think. We think of this very differently. They, this is a self-esteem issue. You are afraid to step into your magnificence. You are afraid to recognize what you are. This is the ego issue. It's... It's showing up as modesty in your cultures, mm -hmm. and it's holding you back. 
you are source you are source so when we embrace the fact that we are source that we are gods we step into that the ego will follow at this point in development, we want to say, you step out. Mm. You step out of all of the boxes. Mm -hmm. The mundane projects that this one thought were meaningless looking back, they're mm. not meaningless. She was leaving systems. Mm -hmm. She felt she was breaking things. She was the destroyer. That's how she thought of herself. Mm -hmm. What was she actually doing? Positioning herself to manifest. Mm -hmm. Manifestation is less about what you do. And she knows this. She knows these things. It's less about what you do than what you don't do, what you don't believe. She tried to find ways to connect herself to 3D because she never felt connected. She tried to find addictions, essentially, mm -hmm. all kinds of addictions. The intellectual addiction, the religious addiction, the economic addiction, the romantic love addiction. These were ways that she sought to bind herself to 3D because she never was at home there. She thought she was destroying. She was... of dark energy. Mm -hmm. What was she actually doing? Was she manifesting? different level? Everyone is always manifesting, always, always, always manifesting, but they manifest what they believe. Mm. If you don't believe, if you don't believe there is authority, then you can manifest anything. Mm -hmm. She's been working on her sovereignty. Sovereignty is the key. Knowing that there is no one above you. There is no one separate either. And there is no one below. But you're all sovereign. You are all sovereign. So why do we choose to be in a world where there is so much control? This is survival. This is survival energies, and they are comfortable, and you're a kosh, and your biology, your DNA are full of these strategies. These are strategies. After you've jumped off so many cliffs and you are caught, you stop believing in the cliffs. Mm -hmm. And she doesn't have many cliffs. She's mm -hmm. closing the circle. Mm -hmm. How will her life look with this new manifestation of no cliffs? Is it up to her? Radically so, mm -hmm. which she doesn't want to hear. She wants guidance, and the point of this is that there be none. Mm -hmm. That the human take their sovereignty. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you something, because many people are always looking for the answers. Why am I here? What is my mission? What am I supposed to do? Where should I move? All these things. Mm -hmm. So are you saying to me, that 
they need to just take ownership of their own sovereignty and make up their minds themselves? It's stepwise. It, it, it is stepwise. Mm -hmm. It's terrifying. Mm -hmm. uh, and this one has had much backlash. She's always been surprised when she steps over a cliff. How many people are angry? Mm -hmm. That that she's not validating their physics, their reality. Mm -hmm. Yes, you have radical sovereignty. Oh, it's so deeply wound in these threads all through. Rooting them out is hard. Mm -hmm. Realizing that there are things impinging on your sovereignty that feel completely natural, mm -hmm. feel, uh, what's the word, uh, practical, mm -hmm. uh, feel necessary. These are not necessary. Mm -hmm. When you talk about her, in this way, she reminds, it reminds me of something she told me before, that she was kind of shaving off this umbilical cord hmm. in a previous session. Are these, was this the way she was kind of forming her own world? So this is a metaphor for her work in general mm -hmm. with the collective. Mm -hmm. This is what they do. But those characteristics, those processes are a part of her being. Mm -hmm. She's applying them here. And every time she succeeds, uh, it's another opportunity for her to leave. Uh. So it is a gamble. It is a gamble. Mm -hmm. She has this way of communicating with us. We are we are rough with one another. She likes to play. Mm -hmm. Are these the voices that she's hearing? Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, she's telling us to be quiet. Mm -hmm. It's a bit, she opened a door that was very hard recently. Mm -hmm. And she, that wasn't the only door. Mm -hmm. When she opened that door, there were many other things that broke free. Now, if she hears a lot of voices, and you say that you are a collective, why does she not only hear one voice? There's no one or no one. Mm -hmm. There is concept. There mm -hmm. is. Uh, she would experience it as talking over the top of. It's like a network down download, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so it's like looking at a. Looking at a sphere. And you can see the other side, a trans, translucent sphere. You can see the other side of the sphere. Mm -hmm. It's not in a line. You're seeing many things at once. And so it comes across that way to her, I think. Okay. Now, how can she take that to the next level to where she can share that information? Where she could actually almost map it out and see it and maybe explain it to others? Yeah, she's very good at this. This mm -hmm. is much of what she studied. The, mm -hmm. These practical pieces, cognitive mapping. Mm -hmm. She knows these things. These are just tools. Mm -hmm. She wants the most effective action to support this human project. Her most effective action is healing. Mm -hmm. And listening. Are we talking about healing herself or healing others? There will be both, but it starts with yourself. Mm -hmm. She's, wow, well, uh, yes. 
she's stepped into that physically, emotionally, there is some more. <sighs> so what does she need to do internally for herself first? Mm. She will be re-annexing her father's energy. Mm -hmm. She's set it aside because it was too painful. The okay. loss when she was a child. Mm -hmm. She called upon it recently because she became aware of her mother, the issue with her mother that she had completely written off. Mm -hmm. And she called upon her father's energy to help her with this because he was in love with her in this life. Mm -hmm. It's a bridge. There is that. She was given. <laughs> she was given an image. This is how we are, so. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> forgive us if it's a little blue. Uh, but she wanted to step into the next level with manifesting, and it is there. But she was shown an image of a man standing at the toilet peeing, which mm -hmm. she didn't realize was a connection to her mother walking in on her in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. And with men, if there's anything including the stream, it goes shooting off in a strange direction. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. So she needs to make sure there's nothing in the way or she's going to start manifesting some... Uh, some odd things. <laughs> Some pretty smelly walls. <laughs> yes, and mm -hmm. so she loved that that image that was important for her. And a connection to the mother. Mm -hmm. What is she getting from these connections? Are they positive connections? Are they catalysts? What are they? She's surrounded by catalysts. Mm -hmm. And she is surrounded by soulmates. Like it is. She was given a clear image of all the soulmates and the press they have on her space. It is so much work here, so much work. Mm -hmm. But we are all in celebration. We are all in celebration, and there are so many interested in this. Mm -hmm. They're watching. They're celebrating. Who are these others that are celebrating, too? <laughs> to, uh, who isn't? Mm. Oh, this is, yes, this is the high-risk, high-reward. She, um... She used to follow numerology. She's a uh, she's a twenty-two. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at her heart. How does her heart look? <laughs> yeah. Well, <sighs> we've known about the sword for some mm -hmm. time. There is a sword that goes from uh, under one arm mm -hmm. all the way through. Who put that sword there? Well, it was who she referred to as Henry. Mm -hmm. Henry. Is it Henry or is it her own sword? This is, this is a good question. It is... It... It is catalytic energy. Mm -hmm. Is she ready now to remove that sword herself? Yes, it's All done. Right. Very good. So now that that sword, it's out. Is that it? <sighs> she needs to think. Mm hmm. So, would you allow that communication, please? Oh. He also sacrificed <laughs> this energy. Mm -hmm. Is Henry now ready to release and let go yes, and evolve you. as a spirit? Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. So let's release 
all of the energies of Henry from within, thanking him for his service. And may the light of the universe always, always guide him. We thank him. And now let's take a look at this body. And now that this sword has been removed and this entity has been released, what does his heart look like now? Brighter. Brighter. Can we put something in that heart to make it even better? Can we put some compassion into that heart? And it's done. Very good. And she would also like to put discernment into that heart. <laughs> Does she need to have discernment in her heart? Or is that an ego issue? Yeah, there's a lot of ego in that. Mm -hmm. What would be better? Suited for her heart. Mm. Trust. Let's put trust. Allow my hand to f guide that trust in. Feel that trust going into that heart. Trusting herself and trusting others. Especially the collective to guide her. What else would you like to put in that heart? Joy. Let's put lots of joy. Feel that joy going into the heart and into the mind. What else would that heart need? We need to fill that space. Just love. Love. Let's put lots of love in there. And as that heart beats, feel that love flowing all through this physical, energetic body, mental body, etheric body. Let's seal that in. And now that we have all of that compassion, all that trust and joy and love in that heart, how does it look? More expansive. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. So how can she use that expansive heart now to manifest a much better world? She'll continue healing. Mm -hmm. And she will translate these concepts. Mm -hmm. What is the best way for her to translate them? In writing? Verbally? Conversation is good. Conversation, good. She flows. She dials in mm -hmm. to the frequency, the right frequency in conversation. Good. Mostly it will She will see that she does not have to put boundaries on what she does because mm. it will be fully taken in Beautiful. by the grid. Wonderful. So I know she's been holding a lot in her heart for not being able to complete that project, that mundane project as you would call it, to keep her busy. Let's take a look at her heart and see what she has done by not forgiving herself for mm -hmm. dwelling on this poison. It's a fractal pattern that was growing. It was getting bigger and bigger and mm -hmm. bigger. Mm -hmm. And it was heavy. And mm -hmm. it affected her self-esteem. Mm -hmm. And that self-esteem then, of course, created other things. She's killed the beast. She's slain the beast. Mm -hmm. And now it will resolve. 
Very good. She'll be able to open the door fully. Wonderful. Yes. So take a look at her heart. Is there any poison left in there, or has that been transmuted? Mm. She was still a little sad when she spoke of it. She sees a path forward now. Very good. Very good. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to know, what is the reason why you brought her here today so from so far away? What is it that you wanted to tell the world, that you wanted to tell her? She knows she won't. She will not accept the answer because of ego issues. This mm. is the... Mm -hmm. She has felt a difference her whole life, and there is a difference. There are many like her. Mm -hmm. this, is the, this is the reason we are here. Although you open the door for your people, mm -hmm. and now look what the cat tried to do. <laughs> The difference. There are many here who have brought special dispensation to help the project. There are many Akash uh, creatures from rich Akashic histories here, and some of those histories include masters. And this is not one of those. This is the new. Can you tell me more about that? What that, does that mean? That this is the new? She's fighting us. Mm -hmm. She's asked for clear communication. She always does. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Humanity is stepping into its own mastery. This is what humanity looks like when it steps into mastery. She wants from us permission. She also knows there's none to be given. So this is a negotiation that she has with herself. What she's bringing in this expression, there are potentials that she may always be in negotiation with it, not let it completely manifest itself. Mm -hmm. We will see. But on uh, the next expression, she will have fully stepped into it. Mm -hmm. And by when you say the next expression, is it within the same body or a different one? A different body. A different body. Under the lighter energy. Okay. Now, she was told she was going to be here for a while. <laughs> yep. Is it in the same body? Yep. <laughs> mm -hmm. She doesn't seem to like that very much. She really doesn't. Will it be better? Emotionally. Okay. And the physical... The physical is not going... She, she already knows how much control there is over mm -hmm. the aging 
she's working it already. Okay, so she's able to to keep herself looking young and feeling young? She'll be healthy. She will. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. Is that part of the manifestation process? The connection with innate, mm -hmm. uh, innate... Which is the intelligence of your body? Yes, mm -hmm. and your cellular structure, they, they wait for you. They, they've been wanting to hear from you, and in absence of your voice, they listen to the culture in which you choose to put yourself mm -hmm. in and how you respond to the inputs around you about what to expect at different ages. And, mm -hmm. uh, and if you take those on without... Challenging them or questioning them? Yeah, right? mm -hmm. then that's all innate has to go on. Okay, so when you look at yourself and you know that age is just a number and your body could be vibrant and healthy to an old age, that's how your body will respond? Yes. Mm -hmm. So all those people who say that they're going to retire and they're going to get older and they're always thinking about old, they are going to get older. Well, yes, that, that is the message that you are sending yeah. mm -hmm. your own selves. So when she cringes at the thought of living a long, old life, how can we restructure that to where she understands that her future will be vibrant and happy? This will come in increments. Okay. It's It won't be revealed, so to speak. Okay. It's as she sees. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that you else would you would like to tell me about this grid, how she's affecting it, and what's to come in the future with her work? With this new template that she's creating? most of her work will be seen in the next generations coming in. Those who those who will be born. Mm -hmm. So she isn't going to have that satisfaction for a lot of her work, but yeah. there will be, there will be opportunities now as well. Mm -hmm. She already sees it in the group that is formed. Mm -hmm. This group, is it getting bigger for her? Yes, and there are more to come. Okay, good. Is there anything that I didn't touch on that you would like to tell her at this time? Because we talked about the earth, how it was being celebrated, how the DNA was being changed. Is there anything else that she would like to know about moving forward? How that's going to impact Gaia? There's something... Uh, uh. There is a question that she... needs to discuss. Um, mm -hmm. She worries about... about those around her. Mm -hmm. uh, this is... This is largely a holdover from where she came from. Mm -hmm. She wants to caretake. She naturally puts herself in these positions, and it's not necessary. It's not necessary. Those who come to her now, they have the wherewithal. She doesn't need to compensate in any way. She can release herself from that. Good. So can we show her a visual of how all of their energies are connected with her at this time? Is she connected to them or are they connected to her? Let's take a look. Yeah, it's, it's a... It's a huge system. Mm-hmm. 
They're, they're all there for reasons. Okay. Are there any that we need to disconnect from her that would not benefit her? There's nothing that isn't being resolved. All right. Very good. Very good. Anything else that you would like to tell her today? Are we complete? I think we're done. Very good. Do we feel, do you feel that we got all the information she was looking for today? Yeah, she's stepping back in. Thank you very much. Wide awake, completely alert, feeling wonderful all over. Welcome back. Let's give you some grounding stones. How do you feel? Are you here yet? No, I'm not quite. Nah, I didn't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Takes a while to get back. You're far, far away. <sighs> How's the energy in that body? Very, uh, very white. Like, mm. I'm sweating though. <laughs> kind of like Miss, Mr. Clean, <sighs> white. <laughs> yeah, his head is sparkling. <laughs> <laughs> desert mm-hmm. it, I yes I have I've encountered that image before mm-hmm. yeah anything else the collective mm-hmm. the collective is really strong yeah how long do you think you were on this journey let me see how did it feel to you 45 minutes mm-hmm. About an hour and 15 minutes. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. A little bit longer. A lot of answers. Good. <laughs> Do you remember any of them? Kind of? Not? Um, I remember fighting. I felt like yeah. I was fighting at some point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I My mom. Mm-hmm. Do you remember seeing that? <sighs> Yeah, that's really important. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was... Does that change the perspective of everything? Yeah, that's kind of a game changer. Yeah. Yeah, now you understand why she's in your life, why you were in that life. Amazing. Yeah. A little bit different than it's... what you expected, huh? Yeah, it's a little different than... Um... In the other session. <laughs> Oh, definitely that, yeah. um, and um, some clarity on some things that I was looking at from a different perspective, mm. right? Yeah. yeah. Well, that, uh, obviously, you're feeding the grid for the new generations. I kept thinking the hundred mon- monkey effect. Hundred monkeys. Yeah, where you kind of like, if you show one mon- monkey how to do something, oh. like them, all of them learn. <laughs> It seems like you're doing this with, I'm the with Gaia. You're, you're... I am rubbing the sticks too. <laughs> yeah. And then the new ones already know how to rub the sticks when they come in. Yes. Oh, yes. But part of what I was seeing mm-hmm. uh, about that was that I was also the recipient of that work. Mm-hmm. Right? It's amazing. Totally different type of experience, huh? The, there was a metaphor about concept that was really helpful to... Yeah, um, how I felt like everything was coming in on top of it, right? Mm-hmm. And the visualization of the uh, sphere mm-hmm. and being able to see like all of it kind yeah. of at once, that really is helpful. That will really help me. Yeah. Wow. Amazing session. Do you want to share this or you want to keep it private? I don't think there's. A, I see. So if th- was there anything that was. If there is anything private, I take it out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we discussed that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. 
but it was very uh, high level, very high level. I really, I am pretty demanding. I don't know how they put up with me. I mean, really, I'm, I'm constantly saying, like, it's not good enough. <laughs> I need more, or I need, you know. So I'm surprised they're not more completely support. fed up with me. But one of the things I was getting to was like, I, I really push sense of humor. To me, is like so important. Yeah. And um, they were laughing at me. They were laughing at me a lot, which is Today? fantastic. Yes. Yeah. My daughter. That reminds me. Yeah. The laughter about my daughter. Um, but. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, laughing at me because what was it? Oh, right. Because I, I had this feeling that I was demanding the sense of humor that I was setting the tone and it's like, dude, <laughs> that's straight from source. That's not yours. Source is funny. That's not, yeah. yeah, that's not you. Yeah. I mean, it's you, but it's, you know, yeah, but a lot of people don't realize that, that source is humorous a smack talker right yeah. <laughs> that this is not a serious place like this is joy really creates life yes and i really want to tap more into that because mm -hmm. if i'm if i'm going to be my grandmother lived to 101 or 102 if i'm going to be tapping into that kind of stuff you have to be happy you have to have the child of a a, a child like mine with curiosity and happiness that's and, right that's really what it's i got to be laughing the whole way man i cuz i'm not doing it otherwise <laughs> that, that's really what it's all about it's, it's be happy and and you're manifesting with that joy that's why when when you kept saying you know you're going to live to an old age it doesn't mean you have to be like wrinkled up and and you know it, it you should be laughing you should be skydiving at 102 as we talked about you know yes you should be having fun with life yes well I, i'm getting a lot from you as well you are <laughs> you are bringing in some great perspective on this as well for me thank mm, you you're welcome yeah I, I connect the dots pretty easily now yes you do <laughs> you did great wow <laughs> We can put it out the snort right now. No, that's, part, that's the fun part. All right. So, first of all, tell everybody where you came from. Well, how far did you travel for this? Oh, uh, um, I came from Spokane, Washington. Spokane, Washington, far away. We're in Miami right now. Yes. I'm always everywhere else. You know, who knows where I could have been when I did this. But uh, what was the reason you came here? Uh, I mean, what, what did you want out of this session? Okay, well, the answer I would have given you before the session is very different from the one I'm giving you now, yeah. which apparently I needed validation. I wow. needed I, uh, permission, mm -hmm. which... That permission slip? Yeah, and yeah. Um, I, I'm not feeling like I need it anymore. And that's the thing. I mean, what we learned in this session is that we are sovereign. Oh, we are we are God. That's a good word. Okay, yes. we are sovereign. We are God. We are manifesting. Yes, our whole yes. life. Yes, and we keep hearing that we create our own reality, but nobody wants to believe this. We actually create our own reality, and because we put ourselves in a box, okay, that's what came. We, we put ourselves in this box. We think that we can't go out, and you know, there's like those ants that if you draw a little line on the on the <laughs> Is the ants or B that you put a little line, they'll actually yeah, yeah. like won't go out of that line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's what or we the do. Pen. Yeah, with just drawing. Right, oh, just drawing. Yeah. And we don't go. And that's what happens. We we are given these parameters saying that we can't do something. We can. Yeah. And then when you do manifest stuff, which you're doing all the time, yeah. it's stuff you expect. So you don't feel any agency. Exactly. Right? Exactly. So that was really the most brilliant part I thought about this is the fact about that, about that, that we have to accept the fact that we are creator we are creator okay does that give you permission to finally go out there and feed that grid make some stuff yeah <laughs> i mean we came here to have fun you know yes we came here to have fun not... reconnecting to that is priority yeah 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 so what advice do you give to those out there who want a session with expectations. <laughs> well, first thing I would say is if you think you need permission, you really don't. No. <laughs> right. And I think maybe that is a driver for a lot of people yeah. looking to do this. Mm -hmm. um, but maybe it's a passage. Maybe it's a rite of passage. 
Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. <sighs> Advice. I don't know. Just do it. Just do it. Just do it. Yeah. yeah. And uh, manifest yourself a session. Manifest a session. A lot of people say, "No, I can't because you yeah. know," <laughs> but but you can. <laughs> And, uh, and we're also, we also talked about something that uh, before the session, not during the session, about how important it was for us to connect with each other. Yes. And right now you're doing some of that connecting too. Yeah. Yeah. And when I saw you putting the call out for that, yeah. it was like spot on. We need to get together. A lot of people are out there thinking they're by themselves, they're alone, and they're not. We all have these very important missions that we're on. Well, and the, another piece, too, is I think a lot of people, light workers, mm -hmm. have taken it on as an identity piece to be alone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and right? you, you can't. Uh, yeah. You know, and, and a lot of the, the agenda out there is separating us. They are separating us from each other. Mm -hmm. So I would say to you, in whatever form you can, get together with the other light workers. That's why I'm going around the world getting people together. It's not what we do at the place. It's the energy that once you're in the, 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 the circle with somebody else who, who radiates like you do, it's magical. It is magical. <laughs> it's true. It is. Right? Yeah. It's not what you're doing. It's yeah. just like being there. The first time I was ever in a place that, where other people were like me, I actually said to myself, I feel like I came home. Um, you know? Yes. Like all, like these were, this is my family. So this yeah. is what I'm trying to recreate every time I, I do this. And I know that you're doing this too. Yeah. So congratulations on that. Well, and I mean, to everyone involved in just calling their people out. I mean, that's, wow. Yeah. yeah. It helps. Yeah. yeah. It helps. So uh, if you would like a session with me, <laughs> go to my website, albawyman.com. Go to the hypnosis tab. There's something, something there called pre um, newsletter. Go to the newsletter and sign up. It's the only way that you can get a session. I send out a newsletter about once a month. There's links on there telling you where I'm going to be holding sessions, either here in Miami, in my home office, or anywhere else. And when you click on that link, it'll bring up a calendar. If the calendar has dates and times, click on it fast. Okay? Yeah. Or just manifest it. Oh, manifest it. <laughs> I tried that whole kick and fast for a long yeah, time. Yeah. I was like, okay, I'm doing this wrong. And what did you do? You just basically let go. Yeah. And I, well, I said, okay, this is a big lesson. Um, I'm doing this type A. This is not how things work. And so then I said, and then I threw in, it's like, oh, well, duh, if I'm going to make it happen, pay for it too. So yeah, I got it paid for. That's how it, that's how it happened. It so is. thank you for watching. I thought this was a really <laughs> wonderful session. It was, it was just so magical for me, just listening to it, getting connected with the collective, which is part of who you are. So yeah. thank you for being here. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Bye. Big hug. Oh, you're doing such amazing work. Thank you. Thank you.